Mount Graham International Observatory is a division of Stewart Observatory, the research arm for the Department of Astronomy at the University of Arizona. It is located in southeast Arizona's Pinaleno Mountains on Mount Graham, approximately six miles south of Safford. Public tours of the MGIO are conducted by the Eastern Arizona College's Discovery Park Campus. Permitting the weather, tours are allowed between mid-April and mid-November. When we track the night sky, this is an Altazma telescope, altitude azimuth, right? Now we're going to track the night sky. Can we track, a, can we track the night sky and keep a star stable in the eyepiece or in the instrument? We're going to track in azimuth and, and, and in elevation or, at, or altitude. So we can track that star, right? Sure. What else is wrong, though? There's something wrong now. If you do the spherical trigonometry, you, because the Earth is, is rotating and we're setting somewhere else on the Earth, you do the spherical trigonometry, you find out that the star is rotating in the image plane. Oh, really? Yeah. So now we have to have three computers running, <coughs> one in azimuth, one in altitude, and one to derotate the image in order to take a picture without moving, okay? We couldn't do that 35 years ago. The telescope's like a giant rocking chair. Here you see the rocking arm here. Here's another one, and uh, our friends in the European Industrial Engineering forgot to paint this silver here, like this one. So we need to, we need to send this back and get it fixed. But this is supposed to be silver, so you have two rocking chair, okay, and you've got two 8.4 meter diameter mirrors, okay. So we can see anywhere in, the, in elevation. And then the whole telescope turns on this axis right here in azimuth. Okay. So that's how the telescope works. The turquoise areas here are ballast tanks. You have to be a little bit of a submarine commander to, to operate this thing because we balance this so less than 15 horsepower moves 750 tons. Okay? Uh, and we balance it by moving uh, antifreeze between these points on the telescope. So the operator can change the uh, uh, optical configuration in the middle of the night, rebalance the telescope, and the astronomer can use a different instrument now in the middle of the night. Whereas uh, with normal telescopes, it's very difficult to do that. Uh, the, um, this is the primary mirror. Two primary mirrors, just like your eyes. You have lenses here. These, we have mirrors. You have a secondary mirror. You have a, a prime focus camera. You have a tertiary mirror, a third mirror. And you have the yellow are different instrument locations. We, can, we have three different ports here for instruments, three on this other side. We have two here. We move this out of the way. The light from the secondary comes down and through the hole in the primary mirror into the uh, Gregorian instrument here. This is a bent Gregorian focus. This mirror here will catch the light from the secondary and put it in here. So we can move these mirrors in and out and change the optical configuration in a matter of 20 minutes.
it's a private one. Oh, mm -hmm. it's a bed and breakfast. This is our moth trap. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what you do you. is you have a fan. The fan is blowing into here. There's a there's a screen in here that allows the so the light attracts the moths. The fan chops them up as they puts it in the in the garbage can. Right? <laughs> so this is how we take care of our moths. Thank goodness they're not endangered. <laughs> <laughs> This was our observer of the year last year. <laughs> On some of our detectors, we use a special, it's a one pixel, okay? One pixel element. It's not like your beautiful cameras have 18 megapixels, right? Um, uh, we only have one. And it's very sensitive, and we operate it at 0.3 degrees Kelvin. That's 459 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Um, and we get there with using uh, helium-3 as a refrigerant. That's a, uh, uh, helium-3 is a isotope of helium. In order to get the helium-3, you've got to knock a neutron out of the, uh, the center of the uh, uh, nucleus of the atom. And you do that in a nuclear reactor. So a byproduct of a reactor is helium-3. Pretty extensive stuff. Um, and so, uh, and that happens to boil at 0.3 degrees Kelvin. So right now we have inside this doer, we've got two detectors. You can see there's one window here going down. There's one here going down. The energy comes into this one. It goes down to a splitter. It splits both ways and then down into the instrument. This is a cross section of the telescope, the Vatican optical diagram. You have the ellipsoid secondary mirror. Remember, we had ellipsoid mirrors over at the, uh, um, at the LBT. Here's a cross-section of the honeycomb uh, spun cast mirror. So you got all these air spaces in here. Uh, this happened to be the first spun cast mirror ever produced.